Hello, and today I'll be talking about robots and their applications. But what exactly are robots? Usually when we think of robots, we think of a humanoid machine who walk and talk like people. Robots, however, are not nearly advanced enough to accurately act like a human or feel emotions. Rather, right now, robots are simply a mechanical system which carries out a set of instructions or actions with the use of circuitry and computer programs. While this can be as basic and mindless as a factory line robot you might see in a car factory, robots can be sophisticated. In fact, they can be so sophisticated enough to actually take in information from their environment through their sensors, interpret the information in the program, and respond to their environment accordingly by signaling the actuators, that is, the components which allow them to perform actions, such as motors. Because these robots use a microcontroller, a computer, to interpret data and execute instructions, computer science and programming are vital to the creation of robots. Computer science is the heart, or rather brain, of a robot, and with the ever-growing field of computer technology, robotics are becoming more and more readily available and are being used in many applications. Robots are a powerful tool in the medical field, helping patients and physically disadvantaged people to be treated and recover quicker and better than ever. For example, to help treat victims of stroke, engineers create a robotic cradle to aid in physical therapy. During the therapy, their goal is to point at the screen so that their arm is straight, starting from the green circle and moving towards the red circle. The cradle doesn't help the patient keep their arm up. It merely tracks the direction they are pointing and the position of their arm. The way it helps, rather counterintuitively, is by amplifying the patient's errors. This means if their arm drifts too far to the right, their robotic arm actually pushes their arm further away from the goal. Typically when you fall in PA, your gym teacher doesn't run over and push you back down, but in the case of the robotic arm, this actually helps. The study which tested whether or not error-enhancing robotic arms are effective in physical therapy found that, quote, the use of a destabilizing scenario forced the patient to keep the endpoint position as close as possible to the ideal path, hence requiring a more active control of the arm, which essentially means that because errors were only aggravated by the robot, patients had to focus more and put more effort into ensuring their arm was straight, helping their arm gain more control more quickly than without a robotic arm. In a similar, yet oppositely functioning way, robotic exoskeletal arms are often used to aid in normal arm movement and function in physically weakened people, like the elderly and disabled. Engineers have created this robotic arm, which takes input from an EMG hooked up to the user's body. What does that mean? It means without any invasive surgery, the electrical signals in people's nerves could be read by the robot, interpret the movements the user is trying to make, then move itself how the user's arm normally would but with much more force, allowing them to lift and move objects despite their physical weakness. Not only is this technology used in helping the disabled, but has many other applications, including transport of heavy objects, military use, and can even be used to help people suffering from multiple sclerosis or ALS. Not only are robots great for helping patients, but they help doctors treat patients too. Robotic surgery is one of the great recent medical innovations because it not only allows minimal invasive surgery, meaning incisions are small and tools are inserted inside the body without opening it up too much, it also improves the surgeon's ability. Now, even though it looks like that thing from Prometheus, it's not a magic autonomous doctor machine. It is operated by a surgeon, but it doesn't simply copy their exact movements. It filters out a surgeon's hand tremors and even allows the doctors to be incredibly precise. According to a journal on, article on the subject, robotic arms have improved hand-eye coordination and manual precision down to micron scales, with the capability of navigating through complex anatomical pathways. Because of these advances in computer technology and robotics, Complex and risky surgery can be done much easier and safely. In fact, robotic technology has come so far that we have essentially created the first cyborg. Scientists, engineers, and doctors have all worked on a project which has allowed Les Ba to regain arm function, despite having lost both of them 40 years ago. By reading the electrical signals from Les's nerves, which once controlled his arm muscles, Les has been able to control two robotic arms as if they were his real biological limbs. Robotics isn't just a hobby, it's a useful application that can change people's lives. With all the amazing things we can already do with robotics, it's hard to imagine what we'll be able to accomplish in the future. Personally, I believe one day we won't just have robots which help humans in the medical field, but that we'll have sentient robots working in the medical field themselves. I think things like a robotic arm being able to be controlled by a human is the precursor to human-like robots which can think and feel. Now this is getting a little into philosophy because some people think that this can never happen, that materialistic things cannot feel human emotion or have original thoughts. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? However, I believe that things like computers can make original thoughts and be used to make something feel emotion one day, despite being materialistic. After all, our brains are materialistic, are they not? Our bodies take in information through our senses, convert it to electrical signals, process it, and we respond by outputting more electrical signals. To me, that sounds a lot like a robot. So while I don't think robots now can ever be self-aware, I don't see why in the future we couldn't make self-aware robots when our technology advances and our knowledge grows.